Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're tackling brindle fur and the technique used to draw it realistically. This one is fairly straightforward and I'm going to walk you through my layering and colour process for this one. Let's get started. So for brindle fur we're just going to start with a nice shaded base of my lightest colour. I'm using an ivory from the polychromos range and gently shading back and forth in the direction of the fur. This gives a nice base for further layers and gets you familiar with the fur direction from the get go so there's no guesswork. Using the next lightest colour, for me this is a cream, shade in exactly the same way using light pressure and build your tone. These base layers are used to depict the mid-tone or the light tone in between all of those flecked dark fur lines. So look at your reference and determine the colour of the fur in between all those little flecked parts. Continue building that mid-tone value by slowly getting darker with your pencils. For my third layer, I'm using a burnt ochre and gently adding fur lines over the entire area. This starts off that texture. In my example, the fur is quite short, so I'm making short fur lines, but if you have longer fur, make your fur strokes even longer. Every now and then, I'm going over and gently shading to blend the fur lines in a little, and this helps to keep the tone even and smooth. Continuing to work on the mid-tone, my fourth layer is made using some raw umber and continuing those soft fur lines all over. Once there's a smooth layer all over, I use this colour again and start to depict where darker patches are. I'm still using a gentle pressure at this point, but just gradually layering and getting darker using those fur lines. What we've done up to now has laid out the foundation and developed that tone for in between the darker flecked fur, which we're going to start adding now. Before we get really dark, I like to go in with a burnt sienna and just gently define the darker patches some more. With this, I'm also gently blending out into the lighter areas. And I do this so that it doesn't look like there's a dark patch just kind of being plonked down. Everything gently blends out, so get lighter with your pressure the further you work into your lighter sections. Now we can develop the dark flecked areas and concentrated dark patches. For this I use one of my darkest colours, a walnut brown, and start off in the heavy dark patches. I add fur lines bunched really close together to create a really dark tone, and I pay attention to the shape and size according to a reference that I'm using, and then slowly start to bring the dark colour into the lighter tone. When I'm doing this I use exactly the same length and method of line as before, but instead of grouping really close together I move the fur lines further apart the more I work into the lighter tones. This helps to create the blended look I talked about earlier, and I do this for other dark patches across the area as well. With the darker patches in place, I go back to shading and toning the lighter tones using the same colours as before, and gently glazing as well to alter the tone and bring a little bit more saturation to those mid-lighter tones. This creates a bit more of an unbalance in the contrasts of the darker sections, and we still need to go in and really depict that sort of spattered fur pattern. Taking my darkest colour of dark sepia, I work back into the dark concentrated parts by adding grouped fur lines once again. And once I'm happy with the tone in these parts, I then start to add some fur lines through those lighter tones again. The more I work into the lighter tones, the further apart my lines become once again. This is key to creating that brindle effect. If you grouped your fur lines too close together, you'd form dark tone all over, but spacing them far apart gives the illusion that it's just one or two hairs, which is exactly what you're after. Obviously you need to pay attention to the particular brindle fur you're trying to create as well. Are the dark patches close together with just a little of the lighter tone showing? Then group your fur lines a little closer when going into those lighter tones. Have you got almost like a spotted effect with just one or two lines present in the light tones? Then space your lines even further apart, so really pay attention to your reference. I repeat the last two processes over and over until I'm happy with the tones of contrast and the saturation of colours and everything and that's pretty much it. I really hope you guys enjoyed this one and that you now feel a lot more confident when drawing this type of fur as I know it can be really daunting when you get a reference or whatever with this texture in it. Just take it easy, analyse your colours and the concentration of the flecked fur and you will be fine. This fur is such a good example of working light to dark as well, which is often the way that you have to work with coloured pencil. If you like this video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up, and if you're new around here, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any future videos of mine, and join the family of coloured pencil enthusiasts here. I upload new art videos every single week for you to enjoy. 
Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye.